wonderful week. We've got beautiful weather outside. Thank God. What a beautiful fall day. The Lord has brought us through, and we're starting off another week in the house of God. We often say Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're going to sing 147, Christ the Lord is risen today. Ready? Sing. Christ the Lord is risen today. Savior. Say amen. What a blessing that is. Because he rose, we too will rise. Because we have Jesus in our heart, he conquered death. What a blessing that is. So God is good. We're going to open up in prayer. Pastor's preaching for Brother Cuzo this morning. And uh, Brother Charlie will be preaching this morning's service. We're glad that you're here. We had a great couples retreat. Thank God for that. And again, a beautiful fall day. No better way to start your week than in the house of God. So let's go to prayer. Father, we love you. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would bless this church service. God, no doubt there are people here with broken hearts. God, people that need to be encouraged, people that need to be challenged. Lord, maybe someone is here today and they don't know that when they die, heaven is their home. God, I pray that today they would receive you as Savior. And Lord, do in our hearts what needs to be done. I pray for the Spanish service and for the deaf service. We pray in advance for this afternoon's 2 p.m. service and again tonight at 5.30 that you would be present in our midst in each service and we'll praise you for it. Lord, we pray for those dealing with the uh, flood situation down in the south and I pray that you would be near and dear to those churches and those families who have lost material things and some have lost loved ones. And God, I pray that you would help in that situation and be near to them. And God, uh, be close to them today, we pray. And again, Lord, we just pray for missionaries across the world, for Bible preaching churches across this nation, that you would send revival. Thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying and, Lord, then rising again from the dead so that we could have salvation. We love you, Lord. Bless the remainder of this service, we pray. Pray that you'd be pleased. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated, and our choir is going to sing this morning. Oh. 
that a great song. Thank God for his amazing grace. Thank the Lord for that. Thank you, choir. Number 41. Let's stand together. Number 41. There is a fountain filled with blood. Let's do this. Let's sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. 1, 2, 3, and 5. Ready? There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Yeah. 
seated. If you're our guest here today, thank you for coming to Solid Rock Baptist Church, and we want you to feel welcomed here. If you don't mind taking what we call a response card and taking that, filling it out, and then as you leave, there'll be ushers at the back. You can hand it off to one of those ushers. We would really appreciate you doing that. So I won't make you stand up or give a speech or anything, but if you're here today for the first time or here just once in a while, would you raise your hand just high enough where the men could see you? Mr. Br Mr. Bringhurst, come on back. Mr. Bringhurst, front row. There we go. We have Jihad's grandmother that's here today, and we are so glad that she's here. And the whole church knows who he is, Grandma, in case you were wondering. So he's a great kid, great young man. Appreciate you, Hod. Glad that you're here. And everybody else that's here is our guest. Thank you for being here. And we really do mean that. I just went over to the Spanish church. Brother Danny Noriega and his wife Ellie have just moved here to be the new Spanish pastor with our Spanish congregation. So we were having a dedication prayer over there just a moment ago. All the ushers are going to come, and they're going to very, very quickly give you a prospect list. You say, what am I prospecting for? People, you say, why? Next Sunday is Harvest Sunday, October the 13th, and right here in our morning service, 10.30 a.m., just give one to everybody, guys, just as fast as quickly as you can. Thank you for doing that. And uh, we are wanting everybody to bring a guest next Sunday. Now, we live in South Jersey. We are the most populated state per square mile. There are no shortages here in Jersey of people living here. So it could be a neighbor, it could be a co-worker, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could be an enemy, it could be whoever you want. There's somebody that if you will make a list and work on that list, now I want to encourage you, don't wait until Saturday. Don't wait until Saturday and say, hey, you want to come tomorrow? That works sometimes, but the best thing that you could possibly do is take a few minutes and make a list of prospects of people that you can work on, especially over the next 48 hours, 72 hours, next two, three days of the week, send somebody a phone, make a phone call, send a text, go knock on the door, talk to them. Now, Brother Charlie, who do you think next week will bring a guest? Somebody who really cares and wants to and will try. If you try, you can if I said to you, man, there are 25 names places here on this list, and for every guest next week, you get a brand new $100 bill. Man, you just woke up. Come on, right? And if I said, now look, 100 bucks for every person, there's 25 names. You say, can I get two lists? Right? That would be a deal. I mean, think about it. Now, here's reality. Why would we do for money what we won't do for God? Right? So we get motivated. Here's what we ought to do. We ought to care enough. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Can you take 15 minutes and just sit and think and say, who can I invite to church with me next week? So I can't remember who all I know. Go through your phone contacts for those of you that have those. If I go through my phone contacts, I don't know how many people I have in there, but it's a bajillion. And they're not all saved or they're not all in church. And go after somebody and invite them to come with you next Sunday. Now, after the morning service, we are going to, oh, guys, I'm going to put you on the spot. Joe, you're awake back there. I'm, everybody grab invites, all you guys that are helping me out here. Get invites and put those in everybody's hands and come. And let's give everybody one right now up here, just quickly as you guys can. I was going to say we'll wait to the end of the service, but do we have those? Not the prospect licks, but the, the, the invites. We're supposed to have them. All right, I'll keep going. If we don't have them, we'll have them by the end of the service, and then we'll do it. But anyway, next Sunday, after the 8 o'clock service, there'll be a continental breakfast in the main lobby. So if you bring someone as a guest to the 8 o'clock service, which, by the way, if they say, well, I can't come. I got something at 11 o'clock, say, come at 8. And if you have somebody that will come at 8 o'clock and come to that morning service, there'll be a continental breakfast in the main lobby. If not, bring them to the 1030 service, and after the 1030 service, go ahead and give everybody one, please. Mike, give me one, if you don't mind. There we go. Thank you, sir. And uh, if you want to, and I, I switched that up. That was supposed to be the end, so that was not the usher's fault. That's my change. Thank you, gentlemen, for your flexibility. We're handing out Spanish ones right now, so if you know someone who speaks Spanish <laughs> here in South Jersey... Now, I carry Spanish gospel tracts. I carry Spanish invitations. So let's stop handing out Spanish ones right now because then the Spanish church are not going to have enough for them. 
So we're just gonna act like none of this happened and then we're gonna fix this at the end of the, so you got gringo ones, who got the English? Uh, uh, here, you guys give me one of those. This side, we like you. Come on, come on, come on. Here, switch up. Let me go. Give me, give me a, a switch. Here we go. Oh, you're Spanish too. Forget it. <laughs> Listen, if the church was perfect, you'd have nothing to laugh about. Thank you, Brother TJ. And we'll get it done. So here's your Harvest Sunday invitation. Looking good. Wonderful children on there. Now, if they come at 1230, we got cheeseburgers and hot dogs. That'll be good. Other food that goes along with that. Uh, pony rides, giant slide for the children. So we got a hay ride out there. It'd be a good time for families. Invite some family that you do know. Bring them out. Say, look, I want you to go to church with me. And then right afterwards, we're going to eat under the tent. Stuff for the kids to do. Come on now. Bring somebody. Would you take 15 minutes at some point today and write names on the list? All right? Now, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to have you raise a hand on who you're going to work on if you're going to fa finish. The How many of you struggled in school when a teacher told you to do something, write something down with writing down? I keep looking at Danny Penichetti. I'm just looking that direction right there, Dan. I want to see your prospect list later on, Dan. You're going to take a picture for me. Hey, we can all do this. Tell the person next to you, say, you can do this. All right, bring a guest. Bring a guest. Good. So thank you for all of that. Let's pray for our offering. If you like to give, you can give online. Or you can give it to an usher. How many of you think Brother Mike's going to fill one of these out? He just looked at me and smirked. I just felt like that smirk was, did you fill one out already? That was awesome. You're just amazed by how smooth that was? Yeah, I thought so. That was, that was, that was catastrophically bad. But if you're our guest here today, please come back next Sunday when we have our act together. Let's have prayer for the offering. If you like to give, you can give online or you can give it to an usher as you leave. You can mail it in or bring it by. And we, need, we do need to pray and that God would help us, all right? So as I pray here from the pulpit, please pray along with me in your heart. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be a thankful people. Lord, as we stop and pause and consider all of your many blessings in our lives, it is amazing. Lord, you've been so good. Lord, you give us a wonderful couples retreat. Thank you for the nice weather, the accommodations, the speakers. Lord, all that we experienced, it was just awesome. Thank you. Lord, thank you for a beautiful day outside. Thank you that we're not in the hospital. Thank you for letting us live in a free country where we can assemble, where we can preach the word of God. Thank you for our troops who protect us all around the world. Lord, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the Holy Spirit on the inside. Thank you for our guests today. Thank you for all that are here that get to come as part of our church family on a regular basis. I do pray you bless the offering. I pray you bless everyone who gives. Lord, bless all those who are faithful in giving tithes and offerings. I pray you bless our faith promise giving for missions. I pray you be with the Spanish service. I pray you help Brother Danny fill him with the Holy Ghost. Pray for our deaf service. Help Brother Chris. Bless the three junior churches, the children's classes, nurseries. Pray bit Pastor Clark, preaching up at Brother Cuzo's today. I pray you give them a great service there. Help our nation. Oh, God, I pray we turn to you. Lord, bless the churches that still preach the Bible. And bless the Christians who still believe the Bible. And I pray for the remnant's sake that you'd have mercy on our nation. And I pray you bring a great sweeping revival. We love you and we praise you. We pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Young ladies are going to sing for us. We go through life and uh, we do it one page at a time as far as history. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth, right? And uh, this time last week, some things happened this past week that we didn't know were going to happen. But can I tell you this? God knows. And though we see it one day at a time, God looks in our yesterday, He looks in our today, and He also looks in our tomorrow. And He's there in every place. So I don't know what you're going through, and again, you may be saying, I don't know where this is going, but God does, and he's already there. And we can trust our Savior. Thank God that wherever you are, he's there for you.
and he will be there for you. Thank God for that. Amen. What a great truth that is and what a blessing it is. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And he's always there. And we walk through some troublesome times in this world. We have tribulations. We have testings. But boy, we've got a God that goes with us every step of the way. And it may not always work out like we thought it would. But that doesn't mean God has forsaken you. He'll get you through. And uh, he sees and knows all. Let's stand together. We're going to sing a song, Yet Not I, But Through Christ in Me. Let's sing it as a congregational. Some of you know it. To some of you, it may be a little bit newer. But thank God, it doesn't rely on you and me, but on Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. What gives the grace is Jesus my Thank you. 
singing and you may be seated this morning how many of you would raise your hand and say i love the lord i love the lord and uh, we love him because he first loved us i don't know if you're current on the latest lesson in sunday school but in romans there chapter 13 and around verse 8 uh, if you weren't there today you will be shortly and it talks about us living a life of love because god loved us we ought to be debtors to this world, to God and to this world around us, that we would express love each and every day. And we can honestly say today, we love him because he first loved us. David sang the praises of the glory of Jehovah. Paul preached that all is lost, save no By leaning on his bosom, so for a moment, may I humbly testify. And did I mention that I love him, how I worship and adore him, when I could see no way. Every promise 
about this Jesus How many songs can be sung about God's Son But there are not enough words Enough notes in the music To tell the story of all my Savior Please turn to the Word of God to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5 in your Bible. Ephesians chapter 5 in the Word of God. Appreciate everybody being in church this morning. And if you don't have a Bible, there should be one there in the songbook rack. It would be page 1010, okay? Ephesians chapter 5 in your Bible. I so appreciate for the Keith and Dawn, all of the hard work they put into getting the couples retreat ready. We had a wonderful, wonderful time. And if you uh, didn't get to go this year, please plan on going next year. It's the first weekend in October, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful time. Very, very helpful, and God blessed us, and we're so thankful for that. I mentioned Pastor Clark's preaching up at Pastor Dominic Cuzo's today, and we'll pray that God will give them a great service there. Ephesians chapter 5, in the Word of God, and let's pray. Father, I pray in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would arrest our attention. Lord, help us to just slow things down in our mind, in our spirit, and I pray you would help us to concentrate on the Word of God. I do pray for anyone here who doesn't know Christ as their own personal Lord and Savior, and I pray that they would make that decision today to trust Christ. For everyone who is saved, I pray that the Spirit of God would press our hearts and in the way that you would like to do it. I pray that you'd keep the devil off this place, and I pray that there will not be that harsh, caustic, accusing spirit that I know he would like to bring against us today. Lord, we plead the blood. We know we're imperfect, so we pray for grace and for mercy. I thank you for letting us sing this morning. Thank you for all those who played instruments. Thank you for those who sang special songs. And God, please bless our church. We need your help, and we ask for it now. In Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name, please help Pastor Clark as he preaches. Amen and amen. Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm going to begin reading in verse 14. 5.14. Paul, speaking to the church at Ephesus, says, Wherefore he saith, speaking of the Lord, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. I want you to notice verse 16. I want you to read with me together out loud those first three words. Ready? Redeeming the time. And again, one more time. Ready? Redeeming the time. Might be your habit to mark or underline in your Bible. If so, I'd like you to mark those words. Redeeming the time. Now, what is time? Someone has said time is life. Time is your opportunity. It's literally the idea of the word. It's opportunity. We have time. We have opportunity. The idea of redeeming the time means to purchase it. It's the idea of you think of something that would be for sale and you go ahead and you get it and the idea would be before it's gone. To redeem the time. Boy, time is precious. Time is valuable. And when you think about life, God's word teaches us that we are to be redeeming the time. In my life, I've bought too many plane tickets. I've flown all over the place many times, and I've purchased tickets for people coming in to preach or family tickets or group tickets, and we've taken trips. And buying airplane tickets online is it's an adventure. And once you learn, I, my wife is the one who takes care of it for me. She's phenomenal at doing it. But sometimes we'll converse, and sometimes you wait on buying a ticket. And maybe you're trying to figure out some final details or you're looking or you're pondering, you're considering. For me, where I sit really matters. Like I cannot stand the middle seat. I don't like the window and I especially don't like the back and in the middle or on the window. That's for me. I want to be as close to the front as I can be on an aisle, preferably when I'm looking to the front of the plane on the left side because I work on the plane. I want my right arm, since I'm right-handed, to be able to get out over there and I can underline in my Bible or I can type away on my computer or whatever. So I'm pretty picky about where I sit on a plane. But sometimes with tickets, you have to understand that they'll have a certain amount at a certain price. And when those get bought up, think supply and demand, then the other tickets become more expensive. And sometimes maybe I looked at a certain seat and then if not careful, that seat can be gone. And what happens is sometimes if a plane fills, the whole flight just gets taken off. And it was like you were looking at it and it's gone. So I've had whatever number of times where instead of purchasing that ticket that night when I was looking at it, I thought, I'll just buy it in the morning. I don't really know why most of the time I wait that little bit of extra time, but I've had times when I went to bed and that ticket said, here's the price, and I woke up in the morning and it was out of my price range. I've had times when I went to sleep and thought it'll be there in the morning, and I looked and those tickets were gone. I've had it where the whole flight was gone. I'm like, how can that be? And what it just meant was it got filled up. And here's what happened. I missed the moment. I, I could have purchased it. I could have made the most of it. I could have been on that flight. I could have been in that seat, but I waited and it was gone. God says with time, redeem it. Purchase it now. Make the most of it now. Use the moment. Redeem the time, your opportunity. It would be the idea of when something's available that you get it while you can. How many of you ever remember this sound in your neighborhood? Right, Mr. Softy. Maybe a bad interpretation of it, but Mr. Softy. And you're there, and what happened? You got urgent. Man, you got urgent, right? Mom, Dad, whoever you thought would be the best person to give you the money, right? And man, you started, oh, I hear Mr. Softy, I hear Mr. Softy. Man, you're, you're trying to get dad or mom to cough up money before Mr. Softy's, he's come, we're going to miss him. We're going to him. And then you've had those times. Hope deferred, make it the heart sick. You were just heart sick about it. There goes Mr. Softy, and you're just looking at the back of the truck as he drives away. Oh, man, 
That was something I wanted. And sometimes in life with time, we miss the moment. We don't take advantage of the opportunity while it's here and in the moment. To redeem the time gives the idea of to rescue it from loss. It means this, watch. Don't let time go to waste. Don't let time go to waste. I don't know about you, but if the milk that I have bought, my wife again does the buying, but my wife has, actually Walmart delivers the milk anymore. I don't know how this happens, but Walmart delivery, she put the order in, here comes the milk, it shows up. For me, if that expiration date says sell by October the 5th, I'm done drinking it as of October the 5th. I don't care about how much it costs as compared to, I have a phobia about somehow putting milk in whatever I'm going to drink or putting milk on top of my Cheerios and all of a sudden there's chunks in my milk. I'm out. I'm not feeling that. I'm not liking that, right? So for me, that expiration date, I take that seriously. You ever start to eat something, you thought, this just not taste right. What, where did, how long have we had that in that cabinet? Right? And you look on the box and it's like, you know, six months ago. You know, no. The idea of it expired, right? This is morbid, but true. Sometimes when someone has passed, someone has died, they say, well, they expired. You know, time, the idea of an expiration date, you, you only get it and for how long? And then if you don't use it, it becomes wasted. I don't know if you've ever had somebody buy you a gift card, but gift cards are a blessing, except if they have an expiration date. Because if they're a gift card with an expiration date, it goes in my wife's purse or in my wallet. We may not see it again, especially if it's in her purse. I mean, if you know, if it goes in a lady's purse, it's probably there for till Jesus comes. But <laughs> the idea would be sometimes I, you pull out this card or you find it in a dresser drawer, you put it there. And all of a sudden you think, man, look at this. We can go to fill in the blank of your favorite restaurant because somebody gave us a gift card for there. And you go and you get all jazzed up and you look and there's an expiration date. You know, it's like the day after New Year's where January the 2nd, you're off from work and you're going to go and use that gift card. And you look and it's like from 1231 expiration date. It's like, oh, what happened? It got wasted. God's word says redeeming the time. Now, time waits for no man. Time will not stand still. So it is a biblical principle that we ought to value time. We ought to take advantage of the opportunity. Pastor Clark says it this way, whatever you're going to do for God, you better do it now. Whatever you're going to do for God, you better do it now. How many of you know seasons change, right? Seasons change. The leaves are starting to change. Some of you say, it's my favorite time of the year. I love the fall. There's other people borderline depressed. Summer's over. I like the sun. I like the warm. There's other people that really strange ones. You're like, I want to get through fall because I love winter. And Brother Mike's got Christmas tree up probably by now. And those of you that love all that goes on with the season. But here's what we know. You can't make those leaves not change. You can't stop that cool weather that becomes cold weather from coming along because seasons change. And life has its seasons. Now, if you remember in my prayer, when I prayed for this service, I asked God to keep the devil off of this place with his caustic, accusing, negative service, negative spirit. Do you all remember when I prayed that? Prayed, I'm, here's why I'm telling you why I'm praying that. Because there are already some of you sitting here right now feeling like, but Charlie, I have wasted too much time. I have wasted so many opportunities. I feel like I'm already this far along in my life to where there's no sense even trying. Please hear me. That is a demonic, oppressive thought that is not coming to you from God. That's right. Okay? This message is not meant to be negative. It's instructive, and there's some warning in it, but I'm not here, and the Holy Spirit's not here trying to rub your nose in wherever you've not redeemed the time. You cannot relive what's already done. You, you cannot do over whatever time you've already had, and you do not have any guarantee of tomorrow 
But watch, you have the now. And now is your opportunity, right now. You understand just a few moments? (laughs) Let me retract that. When I'm done preaching, (laughs) the service will be over. And you will not be able to get this over, this service over again. Think about it. I know that's basic, but wherever you are, be there. Right. Be present in the moment. Amen. And being in the moment will cause us to be able to redeem the time. And redeeming the time is what God wants us to do. I want you to notice the second part of verse 16, because the days are evil. Now, immediately we'll think about what's going on in America and in the world scene, and that's true and that's part of it. But this idea, because the days are evil, it it gives the idea of life is difficult at times. Uh, Life is hard at times. There are sometimes trouble. There are many temptations. Sometimes life is short or shorter than what we thought it was going to be. So here's what the Bible is saying. Redeem the time. Don't waste the time. Make the most of your time because the way life goes, it's sometimes very, very difficult and you don't always get the same opportunity then as you might have now. How many of you heard me in my prayer say, thank God for the military that keeps us safe and for the freedom for us to gather here? How many of you know that the Constitution of the United States of America is not the same as the Bible And that the Bible is permanent, but there there are people right now that would love to take our Constitution and get rid of it, including the freedom of speech that I'm using right now in order to preach God's Word. That's not being conspiratorial. That's actual. Y'all do understand freedom is not a guarantee. So the idea because the days are evil, there may come a day when I don't have the freedom to stand here and in this place and to preach God's word without oppression or without persecution. So here's what I do know. I have right now. And while I have now, I need to preach now. And we may not always have the freedom to assemble the way that we are right now and to have a local church. Y'all understand if we're in China, we're not doing what we're doing right now. You you understand if we're in Indonesia right now, we're not just meeting together like this as a Christian congregation. Amen. This is a blessing of God and you ought to thank God every day of your life that you get to live in this country. So here's the point. The days are evil. You don't know what might happen. You understand we have people that physically are so sick they can't be in the service right now. Some are watching online. And thank God they're doing what they can while they can. But there are some, come on now, who would just do anything to be in this service right now. Sometimes we're sitting here and wondering just when's the service going to be over. Because I'm hungry and I want lunch. I'm not anti-lunch, I'm just pro-service. Now that you're here, question, are you here? Are y'all with me? In God's economy, he's not just happy because we showed up. He wants us to show up and the sense of that we're really here and putting our heart into what we're doing, and you may not always have the opportunity to do so. I remember when we came back to church, and we came back in May of 2020. We had initially heard, you know, millions are going to die right here in New Jersey, and we had to do this, that, and the other, and we had people that were in the building, but not many, and we were running a stream service, and then we said we're going to open up in May of 2020. And they told us that we could not. And the governor ticketed us. And it was going to be be a big problem. But when we opened the doors, there was a a good-sized crowd at that time. And we did all the stuff that we had to do for safety precautions, et cetera, et cetera. But the point was here, people that came back, man, they were loving it. It's like, oh, I've been dying. I haven't been able to be in church. So sometimes you don't appreciate something until it's gone. And don't, don't live that way. Don't miss the moment. Redeem the time. Rescue it from loss. Don't waste it. Why? Because the deeds, because the days are evil. Okay? Now, let me give you three reasons. Are you ready? Why you ought to be redeeming the time. Number one, redeeming the time means you should get saved while you can. You should get saved while you can. Would you look at verse 14, please? Ephesians 5:14. Wherefore he saith, the Lord says, Awake thou that sleepest, 
and arise from the dead. Now, some of you sleep like you are dead. Some of you deep sleeper types. But that's not what it's talking about physically here. He said, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. He's talking about when you're dead in your trespasses and your sins. Y'all understand, we're a body, a soul, and a spirit. Your body's living, or you would not be here in this auditorium. Your soul is alive because every person, saved or lost, has a living soul. But your spirit is a part of you that worships God. And until you get saved, your spirit is spiritually dead. You're not able to worship God properly because we can only worship God in spirit, in our born again heart. And so there needs to be a moment when spiritually you are awakened. You are awakened. You come out of that spirit of being dead, spiritually speaking. Pick up verse 14 again. The Bible says here, you are to awake and, and, and notice here, thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and I love this statement, and Christ, not might, church, and Christ shall give thee light. Do you understand? When you get saved from your sins, you go from darkness to light. You go from death to life. You go from hell to heaven. Boy, I'm glad I'm saved. I am thanking God today. The old song said, I saw the light. Hey, when I got Jesus Christ as my Savior, I got light in my life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found was what? Blind, think darkness was blind, but now I see. Jesus can turn the lights on in your life, spiritually speaking, and there's nothing like knowing Christ. You say, well, why do I need to be saved? What are you talking about? Saved from what? Saved from your sins. What are you talking about? Saved from hell. We're all sinners. The Bible says for all have sinned. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, which means I deserve hell for my sins. But thank God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So I'm a sinner, I deserve hell, but 2,000 years ago there was a man named Jesus and he died on Calvary's cross for me and for you and after three days he rose again and he purchased your salvation, he paid for it with his blood and there has to be a time as God offers you the free gift of eternal life that spiritually you wake up and he shows you the truth and you get saved. You receive that free gift. It's where he convicts you about your sin. I'm guilty. He convinces you of the truth of the word of God. The Bible is true. Jesus is the only savior. And he converts you. He changes you from death to life, from darkness to light, from hell to heaven. And the greatest thing in all the world is being saved. Amen, amen and amen. I was speaking to someone last evening, okay? Three hours. Greg, raise your hand in church. I'm going to make you put your hand up. Everybody look at Greg. Come on, Greg's in church here. Three hours we talked last night. Man, we went through the Bible. And we had a great meeting, great time together. And I was able, by God's grace, to go through what I just preached to you, the gospel, the good news of the gospel. We're sinners. We deserve hell. But thank God we don't have to go to hell. And I took him through the word of God. We sat in my office. We looked at verse after verse after verse. And man, we went through that thing. And then I said to him, I said, look, I'm not going to pressure you. I'm not going to put a gun to your head. This is between you and God. Whether or not you believe this or not, it's between you and God. Whether you see your need for this, it's between you and God. I said, I don't mind. We can talk again. We can look at that thing again. I said, well, if you believe it and you know that you do and you know you're a sinner who deserves hell and you know you need Christ, I said, we can pray right now. And he said, let's do it. <laughs> and last night we knelt down in my office and Greg trusted Christ as a savior. That's phenomenal. That's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. You know where it was really a good decision? He redeemed the time. He grabbed the moment. Listen, there's all kinds of people come to church or they'll hear the gospel and they'll think some other time. King Agrippa said to Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost. 
But as far as we know, lost. Come on. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. And if you've been coming to this church or maybe you walk through the door today first time and you're feeling your need for Christ, your need for salvation. Hey, listen, redeem the time. Make the most of your moment because the Bible says you don't know how long you have. Proverbs 27 and verse 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I mentioned recently I was coming up through Hamilton. Man, I come up to an intersection, no emergency vehicles yet, car up on its side. Car next to that totaled out. Somebody's trying to kick in the windshield to try to rescue the lady that was inside. They ended up getting the sunroof open. They could look in. She was breathing, thank God. I don't know ultimately how that accident went. But I know this. It's just a moment of time, and you can step out into eternity. It's appointed unto men, the Bible says, once to die. And after this, the judgment. This idea that you ought to just roll the dice with your eternal destiny that is something the devil would speak to you. God says, hey, I let my son die for you. Don't push him away. Don't push away salvation. Get saved now. And you could do that. You don't have to hope you're saved. Think you're saved. Notice what it said there in verse 14. If you're willing to wake up spiritually and let God save your soul, Christ shall give thee light. It doesn't mean all your problems go away, but it means you see the truth of the gospel. All right? Secondly, I said number one, redeeming the time means you get saved while you can. Can I give you one more quick illustration on that? And it's not to be negative or accusing or somehow harsh. But there were people in the storm down south that someone at some point said you need to evacuate. Yeah. Someone said you need to evacuate. And again, I'm in no way, I have nothing in my heart but compassion towards the people. But there were people who thought, no, I can ride out the storm. I think I'll be okay. Who ended up drowning or caught in one of those mudslides. I was talking to a pastor yesterday from Asheville, North Carolina at the epicenter and they're still recovering bodies. They're still recovering bodies. They got dogs there, the mud slides, all that stuff. Just horrific situation. We need to continue to pray. At some point, we want to be doing something to assist with. I, Katie Palmer Chuck's been talking to me, and she's been checking out some things through email about where there's needs. I talked to this pastor. I haven't gotten to speak to her yet today, but um, he, he's feeling like they're in it for the long haul. Right now, there's a lot of people rushing to help right now. A lot of distribution centers where he's at, a lot of people that are already there and teams of people that have come in that live closer to them that we do. But he feels like with the no water, it's going to go through Christmas and they can't reopen their school. There's a lot of issues. So some, and we'll talk more about it, may want to make a trip down. He said to me, I said, what do we need to do? And he basically said, wait a few weeks. That was his thoughts on it. There's other places that might have bigger needs, but that's what he was saying. Brother Tony Shirley's trying to help. We know some people down there. Right now, there's a good rush of people to get there and people are trying to help, but here's the point, okay? There were whatever numbers of persons that could have evacuated that if they, watch, had it to do over, they would do it differently. Do you understand? There's people in hell that will be there for all of eternity that just wish they could have one more chance. Just one more chance to hear the gospel. One more chance to receive Christ. But they wait it too late. If that's you, don't wait. Number two, notice, redeeming the time means you should walk in wisdom. Redeeming the time means you should walk in wisdom. Would you look at verse 15? See then that ye walk. Now when I say walk, think the way you live your life. Day by day, we're walking through life. See then that ye walk circumspectly. It's the idea of carefully. It's the idea of cautiously. It means alert on every side. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools. Fools don't pay attention to the way that they're walking in the context of whether or not they're walking for God's glory. They just live for themselves. 
and they just follow whatever it is the devil and the people of this world would tell them to do. So that's the way they live. And God says, no, listen, you need to walk circumspectly, carefully, cautiously, not as fools. Last three words in verse 15. Help me, church. Ready? But as wise. Redeeming the time means you should walk in wisdom. Notice the first two words in verse 15. See them. You know what that means? Pay attention. It's kind of like me preaching this morning. I'm like, hey, pay attention to this. See them. He's, he's like, look at this. Think about it. Walk circumspectly. You're living your life. Be careful. Be cautious. It's easy to waste the time. The days are evil. And he's saying, don't live like a fool. What's a fool? He doesn't think about his future. A fool doesn't think about his consequence. So a lost, unsafe fool, they don't care about, well, I die, me and my friends, we're going to hell, we're going to party, bro. They don't understand. They're foolish. If you are saved, you should live with the judgment seat of Christ in mind, so you should live circumspectly, carefully, cautiously, not wasting your life, because life is precious and life goes quickly. That sand's going through the hourglass, and you can't stop that sand from going through, and you only get so many moments. Now, in your life, you get 24 hours each day. That's great. You get 1,440 minutes and you get 86,000 seconds. Think about that. Since yesterday, this time, you had 1,440 minutes. Question, what did you do with them? What did you do with them? Drop down to verse 17. Notice what it says. Wherefore, be ye not, what's that word? Unwise. Instead, notice, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So God says, walk wisely. Consider the consequence. Pay attention. Fools, they live for the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. The desire to do, the desire to have, the desire to be. They live for that. And God says, for what shall profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? If all your life is, is what I can do, what I can get, and who I am, you're wasting your life. Because it's not about you and it's not about me. It's all about Christ. He is the one to have preeminence. Christ and living for Christ is the goal. So when it says you're to walk wise, not unwisely, it means this. You're to find out what the word of God says to do and then do it. Who's the wise person here? Jesus said, build your house upon the rock. That's the wise man. How do you do that? He said, whoever hears my sayings and does them, that's the wise person. So you need to not just be a hearer of the word because you can be a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. And the Bible says if that's what you are, that's sin. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Church family, wisdom is not just sitting here absorbing information. Wisdom is when you put into practice what it is that you know to be true from the word of God. And God says, don't walk like a fool disregarding my word, be it saved or lost. Don't live like a fool. A fool doesn't follow the Bible. A wise man makes the Bible his guidance for life. And you need to decide, I want to be wise. Look at Psalm 90. Keep your marker in Ephesians 5. If you're a new Christian, Psalms is right in the middle of the Bible. Psalm chapter 90, keep your marker in Ephesians 5. Thanks for listening, thanks for turning. Psalm chapter 90, and I want you to notice here in particular verse 12. Psalm 90 and verse 12. And it's a great verse and one that you need to look at. Psalm chapter 90 and verse 12. And would you read it together with me out loud? Ready? So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, for those of you who mark your Bible, you might grab that Ephesians 5, 15 and 17 cross-reference with Psalm 90 and verse 12 in the context of wisdom. Everybody follow what I'm saying there? For those of you who are used to studying your Bible, Psalm 90, verse 12, think with me. So teach us to number our days. What's that mean? Redeem your time. Make the most of them. You, you make sure you value them that we may what? Apply our hearts unto wisdom. So 
So God put it here in the Old Testament, apply your heart unto wisdom. It means this, you're putting your heart into it. It means you're taking seriously what it means to be a wise man, to be a wise lady. And Ephesians 5, 17, don't be a fool, be wise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. So very important. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Let me ask you a question. What's God's will for your life? You find the will of God in the word of God. Would you say that with me? We find the will of God in the Word of God. God gives principles that you are to live by, that you are to have family by, that you are to have marriage by, concerning your work, the everyday use of your time. It's found in the Word of God. Our problems occur when we get outside of the parameters of biblical principle and we start to freelance and then we bring our plan to God. You know the word of God is called counselors? Counselors. Brother Rossi was teaching at the couples retreat. He said people come in to me supposedly for counsel and he said now do you want consent or do you want counsel? And what's he saying there? Do you want me to just put a stamp of approval on what you're going to tell me you're going to do? Or do you actually want some counsel about what God says that you should do? I want to ask you a question. Are you open to how God wants to counsel you through the scriptures? Or are you telling God how it's going to be? Well, I would never just tell God how it's going to be. Your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Yeah, I love God. I love church, man. I love my Bible, but I just don't live like it. Come on. You may throw your pitch towards somebody else and they'd buy that, but not God. Come on. God knows my heart. God knows whether I'm really obeying the Bible or not. And it says here, your walk ought to be with wisdom and we ought to be taking that very seriously. I'm just telling you, life is short. I'm 56. I was talking to somebody this week, a couple of times. We're talking about time and how life flies by. If I get my three score and 10, I got 14 years left. We've been in this building over 17 years. I feel like we cut the ribbons last Sunday. Come on, Brother Larry. Right? I mean, it's just, man, by reason of strength. If God's grace is, you get four score. Well, I, either way, I got about an eighth of a tank. That's if I don't widow make her out or cancer out or all the different things that take us out living today, right? So, but Charlie, don't talk that freely about that. No, it's reality. I have no guarantee of tomorrow. So I do have right now. I have this Sunday. I have today. I'm not going to look back at all the things I should have, could have, would have done. Because the Apostle Paul himself, who wasted a lot of time persecuting the church of Jesus Christ, he said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark. Hey, you can't win the race looking backwards. Amen. You can't make the moment count if you're always turning around crying about what you already messed up. There's a God in heaven who's merciful and patient and long-suffering and kind. And I fail the Lord, but he never fails me. And in this moment, I want to make it count for God. I want to live that principle. Redeeming the time. I want to have a spirit of wisdom. I want to do what the Bible says. Be not, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You know, God want you to do his will because his will is the greatest thing in all the world? You know, a lot of people are trying to find happiness. Well, I want to be happy, so I'm going to do this at work. I'm going to be happy going to purchase this house. I want to be happy because we're going to go on this trip. Here's what the Bible says. Direct quote, ready? Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. There it is. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Boy, we are like dog chasing tail as we have our own plan for happiness. It ain't going to happen unless you find wisdom, which is walk in wisdom. As God's teaching us in Ephesians 5, you redeem the time. You say, I'm going to make my life count by living for God. Look at a cross reference, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. I want you young people especially to look at this one. And you may not be as young as you used to be, but the principle still holds true. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember the evil days? 
that we looked at in Ephesians 5 because the days are evil. Some of you are uh, young adults. Some of you in your 20s or your early 30s. You ought to look at this and think about it and don't just make a teenage application, I, but, I, but I do want every teenager here to pay close attention. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. Remember. Right? Remember how I just talked about those two words, see then? Like, look at this. Remember now thy creator, capital C, talking about God, when? In the days of thy youth, notice, while the evil days come not. There are going to be some things later in life that are going to be difficult. There's going to be some uh, things that you didn't expect to happen while you're young right now, while you're strong right now. Remember now thy creator. In the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. So God's word says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And Solomon told the next generation, hey, right now, while you're young, before you deal with some of the things that will come down the road, you better live for God now. You need to remember your creator now. Young people, watch this. This idea that like the prodigal son, you need to go out and sow your wild oats and then eventually come back to God, that's garbage. There's nothing in the Bible that says, go have a prodigal season. Go have a prodigal time. Well, I heard that's what the Amish do. I don't care what the Amish do. That's not what the Bible teaches. Amen. You say, what do you mean? You don't have to go out there and mess up and then go and have to be fixed up. Now, if that's your story and God brought you back in, thank God. But sadly, I can tell you a whole lot more stories of people that went out and never made it back. So you're to acknowledge God, you're to remember God, you're to prioritize God while you're a young person. Don't waste your youth on sinful pleasures. Don't waste your youth on stupid things. Live for God. Here's what Jonathan Edwards said. Edwards was in the Great Awakening. He was president at Princeton. Resolved. This is in his writings never to lose one moment of time, but to improve it in the most profitable way I possibly can. Resolved to live with all my might while I do live. Edward saying, man, I want to put my whole heart into what I'm doing. David Brainerd died at 29. He was a missionary to the Indians in New York. His brother John Brainerd preached here in Berlin. At the little meeting house down there at the Berlin Cemetery, there's a plaque on the door that talks about John Brainerd preaching here in Berlin. His brother David wrote a journal. And here's what David put in his journal, this man who died at 29. Oh, how precious is time. And how guilty it makes me feel when I think I have trifled away and misemployed it or neglected it to fill up each part of it with duty to the utmost of my ability and capacity. Oh, that I might not loiter on my heavenly journey. We talked about our walk. And Brainerd said, I don't want to loiter. I don't want to waste time on my heavenly journey. I want to make the most of all the moments that I have. So let me ask you a question. What are your goals for your time? What are your goals for your time? Prioritize what's most important. Prioritize what's most important. How do you make those choices? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Pastor, on that verse where it talks about for what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Pastor Clark so many times has quoted it here in this way. For what shall it profit a man if he should lose his own family? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his family? Family ought to be a priority. The things of God which means your walk with God, your investment here in the local church of time, treasure, talent, task, testimony. We ought to treasure these things. We ought to prioritize getting the gospel out. That's why we just had a world missions weekend. The idea of there's a hell and we need to get people the gospel. We can't wait. Sadly, there's been people, I plan to talk to them. And they died before I did. I had a baseball coach. She lived right down the street from me across the Catty corner from the Kirkwood Church. And I planned to talk to him. I put whatever tracks on his door, I'm sure, at whatever points. I planned. 
I remember for some reason I saw his son and adult daughter and they were on our street and walking. And his father had gotten very sick. I remember going to the house trying to get in the door. Literally, it was a horrific situation. He was in the midst of dying. And I tried to press to be able to literally get in the room to be able to give him the gospel. And the way the situation was evolving, I could not. And I remember standing from the old church parsonage of Kirkwood and looking across just probably 150 yards from my house as the funeral home rolled out the body bag there on that stretcher. Now, I know my father talked to him, and I know other people talked to him, but I missed my opportunity with someone that coached me in baseball at 12 years old, and I got saved at eight. I was old enough then to witness. I don't know what he believed. I don't know if he's in heaven or hell, but I know this. I had a moment in time when I could have been wise and doing what the will of God was, and I missed the moment, and I regret it. And here's what I know. For whatever time I have left on earth, I want to be wise in doing what the Bible says. It includes me being a witness for Jesus Christ. You're wise if you're a witness, and a witness will be wise. Last thought. You ready? Look in your book at Ephesians 5. Redeeming the time means that you don't wait to get saved. You get saved now. Redeeming the time means that you live with wisdom and not waste your life. Don't walk like a fool. Redeeming the time means, lastly, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. Look at Ephesians 5.18. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but, help me church, be filled with the Spirit. Man, I've read, I don't know how many books about time, time management. I've watched whatever number of videos. I've heard all kinds of teaching. I've got a whole lesson I teach about time and go through and try to help people and all the rest of it. But here's what I know. The greatest time manager of all time is the Holy Spirit of God. You want to make it simple? Y'all ready? Some of you in work world and you're doing what you're doing and you know in your life and you some of you ladies reading book how, how do I get more out of my time what do I do with my time 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 very simple be filled with the spirit ah oh, come on brother child no 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 that's how simple it is because the Holy Spirit of God will lead you when you're filled with the Holy Spirit to be in the right place think with me at the right time to do the right thing everybody with me The Holy Ghost of God, if you will allow him to fill you, will help you to be in the right place at the right time to do the right thing. Be filled with the Spirit. Now, I've been preaching a lot lately about being filled with the Holy Ghost. The simple statement that I'll repeat again here this morning, in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you have to be emptied of self. In order to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you have to be emptied of self. Three words. Die to self. Die to self. The self life is a selfish life. And instead of giving your time to God and in a wise way as you walk, you're going to end up using time for you or for other things or for other situations, and you're going to get to the end of your life. May I remind you, no one ever gets to the end of their life and says, I wish I spent more time at the job. Nobody, nobody says at the end, and I've been with people who take their last breath. No one says, I wish I spent more time at the job. Boy, man, I wish I could just go to one more Eagles game. I'm not against you working. You have to work, right? I'm not against us doing whatever we're doing. Boy, if I could just hit one more down the old fairway there. I'm not, listen, man, if I just, man, I wish I could catch a big old flounder. It's flounder. You ain't nobody getting to the end of their life and looking back and saying, man, this, that, or the other, unless you don't know God. But if you know God and you know you're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you want to have a great judgment seat of Christ? Come on now, when we see those nail pierced hands, don't we want to stand before the Lord and have him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
Man, don't you want to live your life for the things that matter most for the Lord Jesus Christ? C.T. Studd died in 1931. C.T. Studd was a professional cricket player in Great Britain. Great at it. Pro athlete. His father was a successful businessman. And C.T. Studd got saved but started to waste some time. Then surrendered to God and he went to China as a missionary. Gave up his professional cricket career, gave up all what he was able to have from his father being successful in business. He went to China. Later, his father died while in China. And his full inheritance, he gave to multiple Christian organizations and agencies. And he said no to all of it. And he lived in China. And C.T. Studd wrote this poem. I'd like you to listen. Two little lines I heard one day traveling along life's busy way, bringing conviction to my heart. And from my mind would not depart. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Soon will its fleeting hours be done. Then in that day, my Lord to meet and stand before his judgment seat. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, the small, still voice gently pleads for a better choice. Bidding me selfish aims to leave and to God's holy will to cleave. Only one life, which will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, a few brief years, each with its burdens, hopes, and fears. Each with its days I must fulfill, living for self or in his will. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When this bright world would tempt me sore, when Satan would a victory score, when self would seek to have its way, then help me, Lord, with joy to say, only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Give me, Father, a purpose deep in joy or sorrow, thy word to keep, faithful and true, whate'er the strife, pleasing thee in my daily life. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, let my love with fervor burn, and from the world let me turn, living for thee and thee alone bringing thee pleasure on thy throne. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one. Now let me say, thy will be done. And when at last I'll hear the call, I know I'll say, twas worth it all. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only What's done for Christ will last. Only one life, twill soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And when I am dying, how happy I'll be if the lamp of my life has burned out for thee. Father, I pray that you'd help the men and women in this room. Oh God, I pray for anyone who's not saved that today would be the day of their salvation. And for all of us who are saved, I pray today would be a choice, a decision, that we will walk circumspectly, with wisdom, not foolishly, understanding what the will of the Lord is, and not wasting opportunities that you would have provided. Help us now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one's leaving unless it's an emergency, please.
Let me ask you a question. If you died right now, and death rate's 100%, unless the rapture of the church occurs, we'll all have that moment. Here's the question. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? I can tell you where you're going to be. One of two places. Heaven or hell. That's the only two places you go when you die. And if you don't know for sure that if you were to die, that you go straight to heaven for a Bible reason. That means not because you're part of a religion or you have your own philosophy. But according to the Bible, as I preached earlier, we're all sinners. We all deserve hell. That goes all the way back to the first man, Adam. We have our sin nature passed to us. And we deserve hell, but Christ died for us. Christ loves us. Isn't it time you got saved today? To receive the free gift of eternal life, to get it settled, to stop trusting what you can do, instead to put your faith in Christ alone? I can tell you, it'd be the greatest decision you've ever made in your life to receive Christ. It's so simple. It's not difficult. You just had to be willing to humble yourself and to acknowledge, God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. When I prayed with Greg last night, I said, you want to add anything to it? And he said, God, save me. Three words. God, save me. That's what you need to pray today. God, save me. I need Christ. With heads bowed and eyes closed. God looks at this crowd. He doesn't see rich and poor. He doesn't see black and white. He doesn't see educated, uneducated. God sees all of us in one of two categories, saved or lost. And if you're not saved, you're in that lost category, you need to get that settled right now. That's what God wants. Today is the day of salvation. Who here with heads bowed and eyes closed could honestly say, Brother Charlie, I do know I'm going to heaven. I'm sure for a Bible reason. If my heart stopped, I fell out from this pew, I'd go straight to heaven because I've been saved. If you know that, would you raise your hand as a testimony? You know you're saved. You've trusted Christ. You can raise your hand. Thank God. Is there anybody here that would say, I got to be honest, man. I didn't expect you to ask for that. And I can't honestly say, I know I'm going to heaven. I've got some doubts about it. And I'm concerned about my soul. If that's you and you don't know you're saved, you don't know you're going to heaven. Would you let me pray for you and give you an opportunity to trust Christ? I won't make you do anything, but I'll give you an opportunity to trust him and I will pray for you. Anyone at all, I don't know I'm going to heaven. I'm concerned about my soul. Here's my hand. Would you raise it high? I see that hand. Thank you. And I see that hand in the back. You can put it down. Who else? Who else? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've got doubts. Here's my hand. Would you raise it real high? Anybody else? I'm looking all across the room. Anybody else? I didn't just raise my hand, but man, I should have. I'll raise it now. If that's you, would you raise it? Anyone else while we wait? In just a moment, we're going to have what's called our invitation. We have it every single service. It's an opportunity for you to put your faith in Christ. You'll see people who have already been saved. They've already asked Jesus to be their Savior. They'll come and kneel here and pray. If you don't know you're going to heaven... If you're a man, follow these men that will come and pray here and come to one of the men that are standing here. Joe's in the middle, Damon's over to the left, Chad's off to my right. If you don't know you're going to heaven and you're a man, come to one of those. If you're a lady, Mrs. Hawkins is here, Rebecca's here, come to them. I want to ask you saved people a question. Are you living according to the word of God, truly? I mean, you know or not. Are you being foolish in actuality? by not redeeming the time? If so, make a choice. I don't know how much time I have left, but I'm going to live it according to biblical principle. I'm going to live it with wisdom. I'm not going to know what I should do and then keep not doing it because I know I'm just wasting my time. And i got to give an account to God for that. My missed opportunities, I don't want to do that. Walk wisely. Instead of you trying to do it, why don't you let the Holy Spirit help? Why don't you decide today, I'm going to redeem the time. I'll tell you, I'm tired of trying to figure it out. I obviously keep coming up with my plans that are just not adding up with matching the Bible and whatever percentage of it. I didn't say you're not trying to live for God. I'm talking about whatever percentage of it that you between you and God know it's not matching up. Why don't you let the Holy Spirit have his way? 
who would say this, God's word spoke to me as a Christian. There's some area of my life where I just need to make a better decision in redeeming my time. And God spoke to me today. Would you raise your hand? My hand's up. I, so many things I want to do and keep the Lord at the front of it all. Father, please bless our invitation. Pray for those that are lost. They're not saved. They raise their hand. Oh, God, give them courage to come and be saved today. Please, Lord. And for the saved, Lord, help us not just to be in a rush to get to lunch and out the door and do what we're going to do. Lord, help us to stop right now and say, Lord, we don't want to waste our lives, waste our time. Help us now. Help us now, Lord, please, in the invitation. Let's stand. If God spoke to your heart and you're a Christian, why don't you come, if physically able, and kneel here and say, Lord, I want to redeem the time. Why don't you come, if you're physically able. I, I, listen, I'm up here leading the service or I'd be on my knees right now because God's word speaks to me. If you're someone that's never trusted Christ, would you come right now? Would you come right now? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. We've got multiple people coming right now to trust Christ. Come on, let's get that settled. Let's get that settled. Let's put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Come on, now's the day. Now's the time. Thank God for the opportunity. Wonderful. Would you come and be saved? Who else? Whether you raise your hand or not, would you come and be saved? Come on, you men can do it. If you're needing Christ, we just had two men walk the aisle for salvation right now. Thank God for that. Now, and I mean that. Thank God for that. That's God's word showing someone their need for Christ. Now, if you're standing here, young or old, man or lady, don't play religion. Don't play church. You can have a head knowledge of who Jesus Christ is and still die and go to hell. There's got to be that moment when it moves from just in your head to trust in Christ with your heart. Would you come right now? Somebody here is discouraged because you feel like, man, I've already wasted so much time. Hey, listen, this is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Just start now. Do it now. Do it now. God's gracious. Turn page on whatever shoulda, coulda, woulda. And grab it now. Don't look down the road. God said, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Just grab now. Lord, I want today to count. You know, if you live one day at a time for the Lord, it leads to a week. And a week turns to a month, and a month turns to years. Journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. If you're not saved, there's still time. Would you come right now? But the TJ's over to my right. If you're a man, just come on and get saved. If you're a lady, come on. Man, I'm pumped about people walking the aisle today. It's just exciting. Thank God. Nothing like somebody trusting Christ. It's awesome. We need to encourage each other. Stay faithful till the Lord comes. And be redeeming the time. Father, I pray in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we will not waste our time, but that we'll redeem it. Thank you for time. Thank you for opportunity. Thank you for life. Lord, you're such a great God. Oh, Lord, we're just amazed how patient you are with us. Lord, I pray for these two men that walk the aisle. Oh, God, I pray they'd understand the gospel and I pray they'd be saved today. Lord, I thank you for Greg getting saved last night. Lord, I'm so excited about that. Help him now. Lord, help other people in our church that are new Christians. I pray they continue to grow, spiritually speaking. And Lord, may we live our lives with eternity in mind. Lord, may you burn it in our hearts and minds today. Only one life shall soon be passed. And only what's done for Christ will last. And we pray this in his precious and holy and wonderful name. All God's people said, amen. amen. Would you remain standing for just a moment? Men that have those invitations, do we have those now? I'm hoping that we do, and we're going to hand those out at this time. So um, let's give the rest of the announcements. Is the men ready to do that? If you're struggling with addictions or stubborn habits, we have a Bible-based program called RU, Reformers Unanimous. Brother Joel Patterson standing right there at the back. And if you are in need of help, 
Please see Brother Joel at the Welcome Center right after the service. That would be very much appreciated if you would do that. He can talk to you about the program. There's no charge for it. It's a ministry of our church. Yeah, you meant to have them start handing them out to everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that. And if you are interested in becoming a member of our church, please go to solidrockinfo.org, solidrockinfo.org, and you can register for our starting point classes. Brother Chad Buley will get a hold of you, talk to you about the classes. We get to know you better, you get to know us better, and it's your opportunity to join our church. If you're a new Christian interested in discipleship, one-on-one, -on -one, or if you're a married couple with another couple, going through the basics of the Word of God, go to solidrockinfo.org and register for their discipleship classes. It's coming Thursday at 5.30. We'll go out and tell people about Jesus. I hope that you'll come. We'll do the same thing on Saturday. Now, Saturday morning, 10 a.m., we're asking everybody to come to the gymnasium and go out with us to hand out invitations. You don't you have to talk. You just go to the door and just put them in the door. If you want to knock on every door you go to, that's great too. I want you to invite people out. You got your prospect list. Listen, it wouldn't take long just to sit down, go through your phone contacts or people that you know, and just think, who could I invite? And then call them, shoot them a text. Our brother Brad, help me, I'm sure it is. Our invitations for Harvest Sunday would be at solidrockinfo.org. For those of you that want it for your social media, for Facebook, for whatever forms you use, or to send text directly, go to solidrockinfo.org. If it's not up right now, it will be by the end of the day. I'm 99.9%. .9 brother Brad will already be ahead of the game on that. And so you can get your social media downloads, invite people to come with you. Next Sunday, because of all the stuff we're doing for the children, we could use some helpers after the morning service, and we do have some help we need after the afternoon service. So for instance, we need three people to help with the ponies because we're putting kids up on ponies. If you want to help with the pony rides, make sure they don't run off into the woods with the children, then we could use your help, all right? We could use a couple of people for the hay rides, a couple of people for the giant slides. Some of you are thinking, I wish I was a kid. Life was simple when you rode ponies. And two people for the maze that we'll have out there. Three people for balloon animals. What I think that means is if you know how to make balloon animals, Brother Jeff Bassett, our missionary, he's the master of it. But if you know how to do that and would be willing to volunteer for any part of this, then you can, and if you want to help for setup or food service or cleanup, go to solidrockinfo.org and the Harvest Sunday Worker sign up. So the service ends next week. All the food will be ready. We'll go right outside with our guests. The tent will be set up. Pray for nice weather, please. That would be so nice. Lord, please help us with that. Give us nice weather, Lord. And we'll just walk right out, be multiple food lines, plan to stay. Plan to stay. You say, well, I'll take my guests. We'll go to some fancy restaurant. Take them here. Let them get under the tent and be around other people from our church. They'll have a great time. We're going to preach the gospel. I hope that you come next Sunday and be part of that. One last announcement. Berlin Fall Fest occurs on Broad Street. And from 10 to 4 next Saturday, Fall Fest is there. And we could use some help if you're interested in being someone out there who can smile, who can hold an invitation and talk to the people walking by. We have multiple booths. We have something for our, you, our uh, uh, recovery program. We have a program, a table for our chair. We're, our crew will have games out there. We'll be playing with kids and teens and their families, meaning the parents will come out. There'll be a photo booth to do all these things. If you can stand out front and meet people, if God's given you an ability to communicate with people and then invite them to church, we could use some more help with that. So solidrockinfo.org or see Brother Jason about that or Brother Justin about that. We just gave everybody an invite, so at least you have one. I'll say this, for those of you who have a workplace where they have some type of uh, bulletin board area where they post, let people post stuff, they're not allowed to stop you from posting because it's from a church situation. So take two, all right? Thumbtack one up, turn it around, thumbtack the other side of it, and put it there. You can do that legally in case they try to stop you on that. They let people put up whatever they want, then you can put that up. Grab some extras. Now, don't grab a stack if they're going to end up in your car and just stay there. If you're going to put them in your car and hand them out all week, thumbs up, right? But if not, take what you think you'll need and call someone, go see someone, invite someone. Just keep your eyes open. If you pray for what we call a divine appointment, God will give you one. Here's the prayer for next week. I'd ask everybody to pray all week, soul saved and lives changed, all right? There's nothing like people trusting Christ. And so it's so wonderful. I'm closing in prayer, walking out the door. I'll be at the back if anyone needs anything. We have church tonight, 5.30. Pastor, uh, I don't want to say that. We'll be here tonight at 5.30. And if you have doubts about going to heaven, 
If you'll see me in the main lobby, I'll make sure someone will talk to you. You'll be able to get it settled today. Father, I pray for the men and women in this room and our teenagers. I pray you bless each person. Help us to have a heart for you. I pray, dear Lord God, for these that have come forward, that they would trust Christ. And I pray you bless each one of us. Lord, we want to do the right thing. I pray no one would be discouraged by the message. I pray we'd be challenged. And we pray in Christ's precious and holy and wonderful name. Lord, we do love you.